Section 2.2.2, .2, the divergence of E. So we're going to derive Gauss's law, um, not geometrically, but just relying on some basic properties of the um, electric field. So the electric field, in this case, we're going to calculate the electric field at all points R vector, which is going to be 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught. And we're going to have an integral that covers R hat over R squared whatever the density is at that point of that integral we want to do and the volume integral d tau prime and we're going to go over all space right we're not going to miss any points and so we're going to make sure we include everything into this electric field and we're not going to skip anything now this integral would blow up if we didn't have some finite amount of charge if if rho of if rho didn't tend to zero as you as you went further and further out to space then this wouldn't even be a problem we can even think about but Luckily, in real life, um, we tend not to live on a uni uniformly charged universe. So, um, And just to remind yourself that, um, in this case, rho vector is going to equal the r vector that we're calculating the electric field for, minus the r prime vector, which is the point that we're currently integrating um, for the integral. So the interesting thing is, if you take the, the, the divergence of this e vector that we're just calculating, well, that's going to be 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught, because just like a derivative, you can pull that out of there. And it's going to be the divergence of this r hat over r squared, and the times the, the scalar quantity of the rho r prime vector d tau prime. Okay, so what do we do here? Um, so why is the divergence only applying to this? Because this is the only vector quantity in this part of the equation. Nothing else, everything else is scalar. It's going to walk out of this divergence calculation uh, as some coefficient. So what is this divergence of r hat over r squared equal to? Well, if you remember, if you went through chapter one and I covered the Dirac delta function and the, the principle that we used to even derive the Dirac delta function was this particular divergence. This is what kind of motivated everything. And we found that this was equal to, out of necessity, 4 pi times the three-dimensional Dirac delta function of whatever vector it is that you're using to calculate this. Okay, So we can rewrite that all as the divergence of E is equal to um, 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught times the integral of this 4 pi uh, the three-dimensional uh, Dirac delta function. And this r is actually defined as the r vector that we're calculating for minus the r vector of the current, the thing we're integrating over, times the uh, field density, or I'm sorry, the charge density at r prime and times the volume uh, uh, infinitesimal d prime. So going over all space, um, the answer has to be these four pi's. Let me just cross off what cancels out. These four pi's cancel out. This integral is going to pull out the value of rho at r. So we get that all this is basically rho of r. That's the way the Dirac delta function rolls. Um, and so we end up with the rather simple function. So the divergence of the electric field is just equal to 1 over epsilon of the charge density at that point, which is exactly what we found using our geometrical methods. And if you wanted to see this in integral form, you just integrate that. So you go the integral of the divergence of E uh, d tau is equal to the surface integral of E vector dot d A vector, the flux. Well, what's this thing? It has to be 1 over epsilon naught of the integral of rho d tau. And what is this thing? What is that equal to? 1 over epsilon naught, the total charge of whatever surface we're using to enclose it. So here we have derived the um, integral form of Gauss's equation rather easily. So anyway, that was fun. Enjoy.